Uh, this is what I built in the last two live streams. So a little map that's zoomable. At least you can zoom in and out on your character. And he can move around and whatnot. And then I can just hit enter or space to uh, regenerate the map. And additionally, I have some uh, down here. You can see the percentages. I'm just using, and actually I added a floor tile since the last time. So I can check, I can get the, uh, the number of floor tile cells uh, used so I can get a percentage uh, how you know how big the map is actually percentage wise based off of the total size of it so that's what that's all about so you see I can move around and everything so what would be nice to do would be to be able to have some uh, some enemies be able to pathfind at least a little bit um, and then additionally probably would want to go let me go check in the digger here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go false for this. I just want to see what it does to the map. I just changed a parameter for the the diggers that generate the maps. It does a little bit. I think I'm gonna leave it like this. I kind of like this. Kind of like this generation a little bit better. All right. So we've got that. So I'm gonna rename this to map up here. Just a nice generic map instead of sci-fi. Let me make sure that I have all that correct. Yes, it's all working just fine. Great. Great. <laughs> now, let's add a script to our tile map. I think I'm going to call it path. Fine. I'm just going to call it path. I like that. We'll call it path. So what we want to do first of all is we need uh, an A star instance of the A star class so that we can use it. So we'll just use the little on, on ready keyword and we'll just create um, create that like this. Dot. Ooh, I didn't realize they had an A star 2D. Let's see if I can just new that up. I can. Additionally, let's go to the, there it was, if I can spell correctly. Yes, here we are, a, a star class representation that uses 2D vectors as edges instead of 3D vectors. That's what I want. So you see right here, adds a new point at the given position with the given identifier. The algorithm prefers points with lower weight scale to form a path, yes. We will initially probably start out with the same weight scale from connected ones to connected. Okay, add a point, that's no problem. <clears throat> so this adds the point one comma zero with the weight scale four, an ID of one. And then you just ask if the points are connected. Interesting. Okay. All right. Let's see what we can uh, let's see what we can come up with. Um, let's just start out simple. Let's get the walkable cells first. That'll be easy. Walkable cells. That should be equal to, and since we're in the tile map itself, we've extended from the tile map, we should just be able to say get used cells by ID. And that ID actually is going to be, uh, it's in main, the main script here. It's just going to be uh, one for the floor. I'm going to move that down. So we'll do this one. So that should get us all of the floor tiles, and the floor tiles are uh, are our walkable cells. So then what we'd want to do is we would we want to actually connect 
walkable cells. I'm going to make a function for that. Function connect walkable cells. I think this is the right way to do it. We'll see. So I just want to do uh, connect walkable cells, and we actually want to pass walkable cells in here, of course. And that's uh, that's just going to be an array, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead and type it. And then we'll just say four point in walkable cells. Okay. Um, if you noticed, remember um, over here where it's talking about an ID, we're going to have to generate that ID. And I think uh, what, what I'll probably do is probably a standard thing. And that is, uh, since it's a grid, like so. I know it's a wonderful picture. And we've got... Better that I don't have a, my, my pen out. And I could do this easier. So you got a grid. I gotta remember how to do this too. You got a grid, it's got a certain number of uh, rows. These are the rows, and these are the columns. So the total columns, so you would have something like num columns. You have number of columns, it's so basically the size. And then you have a number of rows. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. So what we would want to do is we would want to turn each of these into a, into a number. So that would be uh, what column you're in plus rows times the number of columns I think of course you also have to say well actually um, it actually it's actually simpler than that it wouldn't it be it would be uh, like our point dot X plus uh, the yeah, same thing. Number of columns times uh, our, uh, our point dot y. Oops, it went off of the, the screen point dot y. So I believe that's what we, I think that's what we want for our ideas, IDs. So then we come back here and we say ID. Well, let's just make a variable ID equals point dot x of course plus yes we're also going to need to get the size of the uh, the size of the tile map Which I believe, uh, and we should perhaps turn this into something like a knit. Really, what I want to do is get. Oh. I mean, we have we know what the we know what the cell the size is going to be. So this really needs to be, let's just call this calculate for now. Um, and then we'll set this. Um, let's say, um, let's do something similar to what we had. Earlier we'll do map size, and that's going to be a vector two. And basically, it's going to look like this. 
I want to set get and I want to be able to actually I want to set the size and get the size so we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to set that be able to do both we're gonna have to do both um, and additional I'm just gonna I'm gonna copy this because it's just easy to copy and so we'll say map size here yeah? and then we'll say uh, funk set size size vector 2 I messed that up didn't I return map size and then we'll say here map size is equal to the size I need to space that out like so wonderful okay now we're looking better so we want to set that um, in main so we're doing our map here we're creating a new map there's the tile map so I think after hmm, I think I'd do it right here We'll say uh, tile map dot map size, right? Is equal to map size. Okay, so then we set we've set our map size that way, and then we can do calculate down there. Let's go ahead and just add that. Put chow, whoops, tile map dot calculate. We're just trying to get things to work first. Okay. Okay. So now we can assume that we have our size. So that's going to be the ID will be the X point plus map size dot y times or I'm sorry map size dot x times point dot y so that's easy enough pretty simple yeah I think we also have to add Ooh, let's see. I think we have to add the walkable cells too. So we probably should have a function to do that as well. I mean, uh, it, w w w we'll go back and clean this up later. Later. Because um, really, yeah. So we'll, we'll add walkable cells. And really, that's just going to be these cells, just the, just the ones that we pass in as walkable. So that's easy enough to do. Um, that should just say um, a star dot add point, and then we have to do the ID thing again. So we're gonna have to do this. I'm just I'm gonna separate these two out for now. Probably could put them together, but I'm gonna separate them out for now. So we'll add a point. And we'll give it the ID of the. Uh, the actual ID of the cell and two dimensional coordinates multiplied. Weight scale, we're going to leave these at. We're going to leave them at one. I'm going to go ahead and put that in, even though it's the default. So there we've added our points to the. to the map. But now, now we have to tell it how to connect them. Not a vector two, but a vector two. I don't know what a vector is. 
uh, connect walkable cells. So what we want to do first is do add walkable cells. And you know, it kind of makes you wonder if why you can't just We technically don't have to do it like this. We're just looking at less cells this way. sure I got that right. Add walkable cells. Add point. You can see there's some repetition here. We kind of have to, we need to loop through these though and add them to the, or do we? Because can I do walkable cells dot has or contains? Does an array have a contains? I don't even remember. I don't even remember. But it's probably going to take a while to get. Yeah, it has val has that's gonna that's gonna take time I'm not sure uh, how the if the a star I know it has a contains or has point I don't know how it, how it works how it works it You're right here So what we'll want to do is we need to, what I want to do is check. I'm just going to go simple for now. We'll check um, above. So we'll check the up, down, left, and right. So we'll. So I wonder if I could just do a because this is just going to be this is going to be the same every time. So I could do like a constant. Basically, they're just directions is all they are. Um, vector two dot up. Vector two dot down. Vector two dot left and vector two dot right. Yeah. Okay. So there's our directions. So we'll check those here for each one. And we'll say um, for D and D directions. I'm gonna add an S on that because I like it. For D in directions. Okay. So for each direction, we still need the point index. So we're going to need this. The, uh, the relative ID. And let's, let's make a function for this. Let's make it a lot easier. Function get ID. We'll get an ID from, we'll just call it from a point of vector two. That'll let us uh, do some nice addition and subtraction, you know? Addition and subtraction, very nice, very nice. If it's going to be an, uh, an integer. 
So, is it a, um... It really doesn't need to be. I don't think it needs to be. Is that, uh, is that ID an integer? Let's check. Yeah, it's an integer. Let's change, let's just turn this thing into, uh, an integer. I believe you do that by doing this. And then we just say int. Yeah? Yeah. So let's do that for all of these. So let's just say get ID point like so. Yeah? Because it's going to be the same every time, right? Uh, get ID here. And then we're going to get relative ID. But this one is going to be cool because all we're going to do is we're going to get the ID of point and we're going to add that additional uh, that additional direction to it. Pretty awesome, eh? Yeah. Uh, and then we want to make sure that we're in the map. Yeah, I'm wondering if I shouldn't. Um, At the map size. Well, we want to know if this point is valid, and really, we have that here. We have a. Yeah, I may just pass this thing into that. That makes more sense. And I want to. I want one of these. I want to say point. Point. Back to two. Uh, and then we'll just say. Point, point, point. All right, that's here. Point. And point. And here as well. Yeah. So now we have uh, is valid for that. We can do it for, oh no, wait. Yeah, I forgot. There's no no parameter overloading here, so we'll leave this as an underscore and use this one as so we can push in a point. Now I want to, instead of what I was doing over there for path, what I want is um, I want a map. So one of these here. So uh, path here. And really, uh, no, I guess it doesn't, no, it doesn't really. I'm thinking here. We don't we don't really need another class. We could just use the map class for all this stuff. Yeah, why am I doing this, huh? It's a lot more trouble. So let's just push all this stuff into the map class. I think that makes sense. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna just uh Take all this stuff and shove it into the map class where I think it belongs. And I'm going to do this instead. I think I'm going to grab this stuff. And I'm going to I'm going to add a little section down here that says uh how you start pathfinding stuff. Right. Paste walkable cells. I'm going to say calculate walkable cells. Now I'm going to replace that too here in just a moment. We need to also get this directions, which is probably could be put somewhere else and used everywhere. Uh, we'll do that. And we need to do this because we no longer have a map size. We have a size which we know now. And then we have a valid as well. 
which is fantastic because now we can say um, let's say if is valid yes Um, if it's valid and a star dot has, did I say, did I spell it different? Oh, a star. Oh, I've got it. I forgot my, there we are. A star dot has a point. Uh, because we, it needs to have the point, of course. If it doesn't have the point, then there's no no use in trying to connect it, you see? So if it has the point... Um, then we will connect. So we get the ID and we say a star dot connect points. Oops. And there's a little bit of a bug there, isn't it? the id to id so uh, i believe yeah the bi it is bidirectional so we'll have uh, id and then we'll have a relative id uh, let's do this Oh no, I'm sorry. That's will connect. That that's going to stay the array. This one is going to say uh, walkable. We're just going to have one walkable tile ID right now. We'll have to pass the more than one of those in later. But for now, I think we'll just use one because it's simpler. So then, what we can do here is this. We'll just like this. So we'll take. Uh, Oh yes, of course. We have to do um, that's in tiles because we're actually containing. All you know, actually, well, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do it this one anyway. It's gonna return an array. So let's let's stick that in the main function. So here it's going to be There's no uh I want that. Calculate walkable cells. And here it's going to be the floor because we already have that defined. Or actually it's connect, isn't it? It's connect walkable cells. Connect walkable cells. Uh, and then we've got to do this walkable. And we could we could go and connect. We could also go and connect the um, the diagonals, but for now I'm gonna just do it this way. Because we we're gonna test it. Gotta test it, you know what I mean? I wanna I'm gonna run it and make sure there's no errors. Cool says errors. Calculate walkable cells in base tile map. Oh, that's the wrong. No, not tile map. I want map, not tile map. Okay. I mean, it looks like it works. Okay. It looks like it's. It looks like it's probably cat tech doing that. So the next piece would be um, something like function get path, uh, something like a world start. Let's say. But this will return an array. 
because we'll an, it'll be an array of points that we will want to follow. And we'll say if not is valid. Um, I feel like map, or actually not map. It's um, uh, war, we want we want something like world to map, but that's in the map. So we want to, we want to convert the world coordinates to the map coordinates. It's right here, actually. Sorry, tiles. So the tile map, tiles dot world to map. Those are the coordinates we want. We want world start. So then we're going to make this grid start. Or let's just make it start. No need to do all that stuff. And then we'll say end equals tiles dot world to map. And then we'll say world end. Okay, so if either of these is not valid, Oops, not as valid or not is valid. So we're going to check it, see if any of these uh, then we're just going to re return uh, well let's just let's do this. Let's return nothing. And let me check my tile map and make sure that I don't think, I uh, believe we are, our tile origin is the center. So I think, I think we're good there. Uh, I don't think we're gonna need to, to do that. Okay, now what do I want? We want that's what we want. Get point path from ID to ID. Okay, we could do that. So we have a star dot get point path, and then we need to calculate our IDs for these points, which we can do. Start ID equals I get ID start end ID equals get ID end start ID end ID. So we got start ID end ID. Is that all that's in there? Yes, it is. It's all that's in there. Okay. So that will give us our. That's, uh, I believe, let's see, make sure, make sure, make sure that's going to be on. So let's say grid points equals that. And then we'll say world points equals an empty array. And then we'll say for P in grid points, let's just convert them, shall we? We'll say um, tiles.map, I'm sorry, P. P. I believe that just takes a vector, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Ignore half offsets. We'll try it this way first. Um, and we should be able to just append that to the world points. World 
points. Oh, I see. We can't use I'm gonna run it to make sure there's no adults. No adults to be seen here. Now I want to do one thing. Okay, so let's let's test. So I'm going to just Yeah, I'm going to do that right here. Um We've already Yeah. Where's our Yeah, see we are we actually already have our um So you, we've got some duplication there between that and the map. You see, we've got it's the same thing. We'll have to ch ch change that. We can add it to a utility class later. That's no big horrible thing. It's fine. This is prototyping. Um. Yeah, but I want to do something similar here. What I want to do is pick out a random point uh, that's in our walkables. So we'll do it like this. Rand point equals walkables of basically this. And it's going to be walkable cells. Yeah, like that. So there's a random uh, random point. So we'll try to pathfind to that. So we say... Um, there we go. No, not parent. Find path. So let's. So we'll have to change this one. Let's start. Let's have the point uh, map dot. Actually, since I have it, I don't even have to do that. Tile map dot world to map, right? I'm sorry, map to world. Map to world. And then uh, random point. And then we will use our player as the. Uh, as the uh, other. as the destination. And of course I pasted it incorrectly. There we are. So now we'll say. Uh, world points equals and not even world points I'm gonna say world path points I'm gonna see what happens when I run this Okay, cool. Uh, we wouldn't. It'd be nice to have something we could see. Let's create a just a a dummy. Let's add a no two D. Let's just call it a dummy node. Uh, let's give it a sprite. 
and then we will say texture. And we'll do this. Yeah, I forget how many horizontal. 11. And then uh, three, seven. There we are. And we'll just figure something out here. We'll do something. All it needs to be is different. We'll use that. Um, and he is centered. Okay. So let's take the dummy node then. And we'll do it all down here because we're, we're, we're prototyping. So let's say dummy node dot position equals random point. Oh, and we have to, we probably have to, uh, yeah, we've got to convert that random point. So let's, let's do this. Actually, let's do this. Uh, let's just say, this makes it easier. Let's just do that all in one, all in one go. There we are. See what happens now. Okay, there it is. So that, uh, that means that We need to add the offset. We need to add the offset, the half offset to them. Like this. We can do that. It's simple. And let's see, he should start in the right place. Yeah, that's a, uh, there we go. Something more like that. There, that would be a good one to try. Okay, that works. I'm gonna scale him down some because I think he's a little bit large. Uh, let's do like 0 0.6, 0 0.6. And I'm going to modulate his, let's make him yellow, because I like yellow. Let's, um, it's going to involve some more variables. Um, it will stick it in process here. So, uh, oops. Let's call this uh, path points. And we'll say the following process. Um, if not path. I'm going to use the draw function. So the draw function looks like draw line from to color width, etc. So if we have the path points, so for let's do this for i in. A range because we want to start uh, with one so we'll go one two uh, path points dot size and then we want to take uh, we'll do something like previous point equals path points. And in this case, we'll start with the first one, which is the zeroth one. Beautiful, yeah. Uh, and these are, of course, not 
they're not converted. So we'll have to convert them. Uh, draw a line. So let's do this. I know this is getting kind of messy, but it is what it is. Path, uh, previous point. Previous point. And then var p2 equals tile map. Map to world. Uh, path points of i. And then we'll draw a line from p1 to p2. <clears throat> oh, and we want to do, uh, because our, our tiles are 32 by 32, so we'll want to offset that. We want to go 16 in each one. So we'll offset that as we convert it. And what? Color? Color dot. Let's do yellow green. I don't know what that is. Float width is one. Um, and then we need to also do a previous point. Wait, 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 wait. We're going about this all wrong. Let's convert this up here. That way we don't have to do that every time. That saves us some. So let's not do that. Say previous point. Then we can say previous point equals P2. Hold your breath. Oh, this needs to go down here. We haven't done any of this yet, so it should just, yeah. Okay, now we should be able to say, right here. So then we'll say path points equals, oh, it is world path points. So we don't have to convert them. Whoops, forgot about that. So we don't have to do this. But we do have, we do need to add the, I think we need to add that offset still. See what that does. Yeah, it's great. It it does nothing. I don't see any. I'm not seeing any drawing. Let's go. Let's see if it's actually getting in here. I'll just do this. I'll set a break point. Let's see if it gets in here. Okay, it's not getting in there. Path points. Let's go here. Right there, world path points. Uh, oh. No. Let's go look in there. So it's not finding any. It's not. It's not finding any uh, points. <clears throat> Oh, and also, let's get rid of that script, because we don't need it. And I want to get rid of that in here as well. Oh! Hopefully I didn't mess everything up. Oh, no. What? Show me, show me, show me. Where? Oh yeah. Yeah, that is no longer necessary. Yeah, that should all be in walkable cells. I must have messed some things up here. Uh, yeah, that should be map.
Oh, okay. My fault. That needs to be an ID. So, get... Let's just do it like this. This should be fine. Has point. Relative ID. It'll calculate that even if it's not valid. Wait. Is that? Yep. What is this? Not sure what it's saying there. Zoom out. I'm gonna break right here. I'm gonna see if that fine path is even. Okay. World start. World end. I. Did I convert that one? Fine path. Yes. I think so. Yeah. I'm going to leave that open for now. Uh, okay. So let's continue to step in. Okay. Start is what? 47, 47. End is 1, 1. Really? This is where we may run into trouble here, I bet. Yep. Yes, and because this is I'm not sure why it's doing that. Let's do this. Let's just see what happens when I do that. Come on. Be flexible. Oh, it broke again. Okay, that didn't work. I want to know why this doesn't work. Why isn't that working? Start is 41 by 43. End is 1... 1, 1. Is the, the end is the player... The end is the player position. Point. Hello. One one. So is it greater than border? How is my point one one? Did I not? That's why. I'm generating the map and then I'm setting the I'm setting the player position. Okay. Maybe this will help me. Okay. Okay. It's telling me notif drawing is only allowed in notification draw. Oh, okay, so that's right. There's a draw there is a draw callback. No problem. All we gotta do is just Grab these little fellas here. Actually, we don't have to do that. We can just do funk. Draw. Run. Well. 
I don't see any lines. But... Well, let's look and see. Let's look and see if we have any points in here. We may still have a problem with this. No, there are points. Okay. Let's go here. And let's continue. This way. There we go. Previous point. So it's drawing the lines. How big are the how big are the points? Twenty six. I'm not sure why we're not seeing them. Hello there, square. Let's do this. I'm going to get rid of this. We don't need it. I want to uh, make this invisible. Let's see what happens. Maybe it's drawing it behind. Yeah. There it is. So, the map. Okay, so we're drawing it. But it's not being drawn on top of the map. I want to see it on top of the map. So then the question becomes draw a line. figure that it would do that I bet since it's up here it's drawing how about I wonder if changing the Z index would would change where that's drawn Let's put this, let's put the Z index at like a negative number and see if that will, yes. Hello. Let's put that Z index at like a negative. Let's just set it at, set it at a negative five. All right. Look at that. That is what I wanted. So I should be able to zoom out, regenerate the map. And we're not, okay, we're not recalculating. Looks we'll like we're not recalculating that every time I do that. Why not? I need to, goodness gracious, of course, I need to reset that A star. Of course, golly. So I need to, if there is a such thing, reset A star. A star dot re, like, I'm gonna clear all that stuff out. Dot, oh, let's check it. That's my problem. I think that's why that's not doing, doing the right thing. Let's see, because I don't want to remove it to clear. Is that what I want? Clears all the points and segments. That's exactly what I want. So let's just say clear. And then in main, we will before. Let me put 
put this where I want to go. Want it to go. A star. Okay. So right here, we want to say map uh, reset A star. Now let's see if this works. I think it's probably working. I'm not sure why. Or maybe it's not. I don't know. Let me do this. Print world path points dot size. See how many there are. Not size, little s. Four, zero, ten, twenty. We actually don't even need world path points. We just do that. That's not gonna make, I don't think it's gonna make a difference though. It's still showing our previous one. Even though it's recalculating them. We know that because the size is changing. It's doing it right, and that one's empty, but it shouldn't be. And then there's one, and then there's another empty. So to figure out that, figure that out. We're getting there. We're getting close, sir. Uh, we could add in the diagonals as well. Add an option to connect those. And we always get a path that first time. Let me check this. Probably have an issue somewhere. We don't have any internal variables here, do we, that we need to... I'm imagining that's probably the only thing you have to do. I think so. Oh, look. Of course, we, well, that wouldn't work. Because uh, you have to, we have to know what they are for a given tile. 
All right, so never mind. Reset a star. Wait. Where am I resetting? Why am I over here? I'm going to reset here. I wonder if it makes any difference if I just do this. And then I could just, uh, I don't think it does. No, it's the same every time. It shouldn't be the same every time! What is different? Am I repositioning him before I just, no, there, look, I'm, let's put all these up here before. It really should be this. Am I doing the same thing then? Yep. Just in case I change the tile size. Check this again. Oh, look, did you see that? Wait, wait, it messed up. Why did it mess up? I, what did I move? What did I move? What did I move? What did I move? No, that's fine. I moved. What did I move? Camera. That doesn't matter. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's wrong. What we should do is the following. That's probably what was going on. Whoops. That's fine. And I should probably clear it too, actually, now because I have some different things going on. one of these two Let's do this so we'll re reindent that
That boggles my mind. That should be that. And it is. I'm going to do a quick replace path points. I want to put an underscore under it just to make sure I know that that is a private variable for now. Privacy. Can I just say path points? Come on. Path points dot. do this. This this makes no sense. Um unless uh you know perhaps let me look at this. Surely it's not the same. Can't be. It's moving it. Yeah, it's different every time. I know it's working. And it works the, it works the first time every time. But I'm just confused as to why that isn't getting cleared. Um, let me try something here. I want to see what happens when I do that. I did not mean to do that. Yeah, I want to clear those. <laughs> and there should be nothing. Well, that's interesting. Try this. Print. So there should be a one. And then nothing. Okay, so those must have to be cleared out somehow. I did. I don't know. I didn't realize that. Uh, so okay. So how does that work? Oops. Draw a line. I mean, I have it working, but I don't. I don't know how the. Uh... Oh, hello. There we go. So it draws the first time, and then you call update. Okay. Well, we'll see. If I understand it 
correctly. Let's um, let's do this. Let's call update right here. So it just redraws whatever I've drawn. Okay, does that work? Yes, it does. Of course. Look at that. So we're getting the path. Path is successful, uh, successfully being calculated. So the next thing to do would be to optionally um, we could say what would we say here? Up, down, left, and right. So what we could do is we could do something like this if we wanted to add the diagonal direction be one one and minus one minus one and then we would need vector two uh minus one one and then vector two one minus one so that would be our that would be our diagonals so if we wanted to add diagonals as a connected connectable uh walkable cells we could take this once again, and we could say di diag. Actually, what we could do is say um, just do it this way. That way, it's one call. And then, additionally, we could say if connect diagonals then for dn diag directions we would do the same it's the exact same thing and is, is it fussing about that Oh, this didn't get indented. Now, so this should work as before, and it do, it do work. <laughs> Let's. See if the diagonals work now. They do. Diagonals work. Okay. Beautiful. I don't know that diagonals are really necessary for this particular application, but anyway, they do work. That's neat. All right. That's what I wanted to accomplish. So, 
and my streaming time is pretty much up. So that's what we got. We got uh, we got pathfinding working. So basically, I can find we added a star to our generated map, and I just picked a random point on the floor, and then we just pathfind to the player, and I'm drawing that out just to make sure it all works, and it does. Some pretty cool, pretty cool maps actually. So the next thing I guess would be um, shooting and uh, enemy movement and how we do that intelligently. So.